Hey guys, just a quick vlog. So I was on the uh, the Twitter, and uh, this person, Sarah Drasner, I don't really know, but uh, she seems to be pretty popular on Twitter anyway. She says, uh, please stop glorifying what is unnecessarily complicated. I have heard countless times people brag about how long it takes people to understand what they work on. Talking about coding here. In my perfect world, it would be the opposite. You would brag about how quickly people can understand what you wrote. So Brad Traversy says, in my book, bad code is code others can't read and work with. Uh, if you purposefully overcomplicate it so others don't understand, you are just a douche. So uh, in my literal book, shameless plug, um, I talk about that. The number one sign maybe number two, but the number one sign of a very good coder is that they write code that's very simple and easy to understand. If your code is complex, then you are a noob coder or a junior coder, or you're what Brad said you are. So my uh, response to that was, uh, true that, the best developers write simple, easy to understand code. If it's too complex, it has to be refactored. If I find someone is writing code that is explicitly complex for no reason, I fire them. Exactly, exactly. Um, what's refactoring? Hold on. Through magic of video, boom! Refactoring. This is one of the uh, seminal books in uh, software development, one of the most important books out there, Refactoring, Improved Design of Existing Code by Martin Fowler. Now, this is all for Java, and I bought this book way back in the day. This book was printed in 1999. No, this is the 2003 edition. Original is 1999, I bought this 2003, uh, evidently, and uh, this is a very, very, very important book. This teaches you basically how to look at code and how to simplify it. Refactoring is the process of taking code that's overly complex and simplifying it. Advanced developers simplify. I've heard people not only brag about how complex their code, but even more nefarious, they write code that's overly complex to protect their jobs. When I see that, that's, the, uh, that's uh, malpractice, in my opinion, as a developer. You should always strive for simplicity in your code. Simplicity in your code makes a much more maintainable code base. It makes a code base that is um, easier to expand upon, easier to debug, and you're just doing a disservice to uh, your clients, if you're a freelancer or a contract developer, or you're doing a disservice to your employer if you purposely write overly complex code, whether to stroke your ego or to uh, try to protect your job. The best way to protect your job is being a great coder that writes simple, easy to understand, well-documented code and well-functioning code. If you do the opposite, um, you're not cool. So there you go. This is an interesting little uh, a Twitter thread that I picked up on, and people have been watching my videos know I've been talking about this, teaching this for a long time. So there you go. It's so important to write simple code that some of the most important books in the development world ever written have been written about simplifying code. So don't write complex code and be a master developer. Oh, by the way, before I forget, when you see me talk about a particular technology, a new language, I just talked about Gen recently, I just mentioned it, it was put out there for AI development, I'm not necessarily endorsing the language. One of the jobs of a developer is just to keep on top of what's going on out there. It doesn't mean learn everything, because then you're gonna drive yourself nuts. You gotta spend most of your time as a developer actually writing code and building real systems, not trying to learn every new framework, language, or library that comes out, because you're gonna drive yourself nuts, and most of these technologies will just end up in the dustbin of, uh, of, nerd, of nerdness. They will, they'll, they'll just disappear, they won't be used. You see many examples of that. So. That being said, you still have to be at least aware of what's going on out there so that you can make decisions. What are the decisions? The decisions whether or not it might make sense to use a particular technology. As I've described in other videos, in my last uh, several years as a professional freelance developer, I would look at the needs of the project and then I would choose 
a technology, it could be a programming language, it could be a framework, what have you, for that particular job. Sometimes I would use a language or a technology that I was familiar with, and sometimes I would use something I have not used before. But because um, I had my finger to the nerd winds, I knew what was out there, I was able to assess projects properly and I was able to say, okay, hmm, for this particular project, it might make sense to do this. Or for this project over here, it might make sense to use this programming language with this framework here, which I've never used before, but because of the needs of the particular project, it makes sense to use these technologies. So I would just learn it because I had a strong understanding of the fundamentals of software development, of languages, of the architectures that are out there. So I was able to assess and learn very, very quickly. When you become a true professional developer, you will become language and technology agnostic, meaning you won't care. You won't care. Agnostic is not exactly the perfect word, but you basically, uh, well, maybe it is. Anyway, you won't be a zealot in terms of the technology that you're going to use. Sometimes, yes, you will have a favorite language, a, framework, a favorite framework, but not uh, not every problem is a nail, which means not every problem needs to be driven with a hammer. Sometimes you find yourself with a specialized use case where you're going to need a particular project. You know, For non-programmers out there, it's like choosing a vehicle, a car. Sometimes a Porsche 911 would be fantastic for the racetrack, but if you're going uh, off-roading, a Porsche 911 would be a terrible, terrible choice. You want to use an, FU an SUV in that situation, right? So it depends on the use case. Same thing with programming languages and technologies. I strongly suggest you get away from the a beginner intermediate level of thinking that this language is better than that language in all situations. Everything is circumstantial. It's like in MMA. MMA, uh, when they first started with the UFC back in the 90s, the, the, the boxer would come in, and the kung fu guy would come in, and the taekwondo guy would come in, and the jiu jitsu guy would come in, and so forth. And uh, people would think in those terms. And then it evolves. And then they said, well, if you're going to get into MMA, you got to learn a bit of jiu-jitsu, a bit of wrestling, a bit of boxing, a bit of Muay Thai. And then it evolved from there. It became not so much the style, but more the, the, uh, the method of fighting. It became stand-up versus ground. It became a striker versus grappler. And now it's, it's kind of evolved into to that, where you have strikers, versus grapplers in terms of preferences, but everybody has to know, has to be at a certain level of competency in all these different things. You know, grapplers, submission artists, strikers, and doesn't it's not so much traditional style. It's not so much Muay Thai or Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu or wrestling. You know, each of them brings something to the table. That's what the advanced fighter knows. And guess what? That's what the advanced software developer knows. Sometimes you want to do JS and you want to web stack it. Sometimes you might go native Kotlin in Java, native iOS with uh, Swift. Sometimes you go Flutter. Sometimes, you, you know, you get the idea. I hope that makes sense, so um, there you go.